I need all the caffeine. Fire, 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 fire. Whoa. Hi, folks. Welcome again to another review of, I'll tell you what, a really fun, at least wrestling-wise, fun Monday Night Raw. I was kind of shocked. Uh, sorry about the time it took me to put this video up. I just started a new job. And anyone who starts new jobs realizes, especially when you have two other jobs, that you get incredibly busy. I think yesterday, for the most part, I worked 14 hours. And I got five hours of sleep. So I kind of literally came home after work, after actually doing grocery shopping, because that's important. For grocery shopping, I, I took a nap. And this video is getting up late, and I still have stuff to do. I have to get to the gym. I think the good news is I don't have to be at work insanely early. So that's I mean that means I can sleep, which is always good because this guy Hobo Tom likes to sleep. I'm not here to talk about what I like, though. I'm here to talk about what you like, and all the really good parts of Raw. Because I'll tell you what, overall. This was a fun wrestling show. Uh, let's start off. Um, so it goes the highlights of Smack. What happened on SmackDown? Which is pretty cool. And there's more pyro. Seth Rollins must be in charge because there are flames and everything. Burn it out! Yay! yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> Some things weird. Uh, so it starts off with a uh, Becky Flair and uh, Becky Flair, uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Promo shows off in the brawl. I like the fact that they're doing this. This is a little bit different. And different actually can be fun in the fact that it's the opening match between two known wrestlers. It's not a title match, but it does have some importance to the whole show. That's good. That means, oh, what could have happened during this match? This is a good match. Actually, this is a very good match. I like this match. That's a very good match. Uh, starts off with a brawl. They're both yapping back and forth. Um, and then eventually match starts. Charlotte Flair has a terrible color palette. I'll tell you what. She looked nearly naked in those trunks and tops. If it wasn't for that weird touch of blue. That's not Charlotte. I hate to say it, folks. That is not Charlotte Flair's color. And Becky's wearing the two-piece. Yep, she's Irish, all right. So I'll tell you what, you get a hint of her back or, or, or her belly. Man, she's pasty pale. I wonder if that's even a color scheme. That should be a new Crayola crayon. Pasty pale. Yeah, that's spray on tan. I don't know. Either... Go full tan on natural. Or just hasty all throughout. I think the weird thing is Paige was the opposite. I think <laughs> Paige's midsection was actually more tanned than other parts of her body. That's weird. Enough about that, though. Um, this was a fun match. It was a good match. It was a good quality match. I don't know what happened. Because I know... I think when I was taking notes, I got distracted by my cat. And Charlotte Flair just stuck her tongue out. Whoa. Charlotte Flair is giving the audience tongue. That's good. Or, I don't know, bad. We'll see. Um, Charlotte, for the most part, gets the, gets the better of Becky Lynch during the match. I'll tell you what was really fun though. Again, this again this determined the first pick of night two. Flair. Woo! I'll tell you what. These two know how to counter wrestle, because again, Flair countered the disarmor. It was a pretty good back and forth match. Becky Lynch hit the Scorpion Death Drop. That's awesome to see. Uh the disarmor is no longer the super unprotected finisher of Doom, which is good. No real finisher should ever be like that. Again, as long as you can counter it, it's, it's, it's not buried at least, which is good. Um, uh, Becky, 
She she went by like a super stack. She this this is it was a roll. It was a crucifix roll up because Charlotte was so upset that she couldn't pin Becky. She was like laughing and like, ah, what, what, what do I do? What what, what do I? Oh. So yeah, it was this kind of like frustrated heel thing, which fits Charlotte perfectly, almost like her dad. So she's she's learned something. So that was fun though. Um, it was a she she got stacked though. It's like she was like near vertical. Her legs were. Oh whoa, Charles' legs near vertical. <laughs> this sounds bad. But I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. This is, was a. Tremendous way to open up Raw. This match is a surf and turf match. When was the last time you could ever say any Raw match or to open Raw was a surf and turf match? It's been a while, so that's really good. Raw's, Raw has it together because SmackDown... SmackDown was good, but it seems a long... I don't know. It seemed about it. SmackDown seemed two hours. Raw for a change seemed two hours. It was really good. And uh, then again, there's a recap of the rules of the draft. Seth Rollins comes out for a promo because he was Raw's first draft pick. Yeah, what do you expect? And um, then we have Andrade versus Ali, the battle of one namers. This was fun, though. Oh wow! The thing is, they worked at a very consistent pace. It was a fairly well. It was a well-paced match. It seemed to have a fast pace. Fast pace. Um, unlike the Randy Orton Ali match we saw was that last week or a week ago. But again, it's not very few wrestles. Or if they did wrestles, they did wrestles with purpose. Um, I think one instance Andrade would put Ali into a headlock. He'd be right off the ropes. He was in there for a second, bounced off the ropes. It made sense. And it just didn't seem long. It was, oh, oh. And the king got chided for his comments about Selena Vega. Selena Vega was wearing that onesie, that onesie bodysuit, too. Wow. He has some booty on her. Damn, she's tiny, though. But, again, it was so... There's a difference between being slow versus being deliberate. Andrade carries a very deliberate pace, and I like to see that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have to do that Thursday, too. I'm so busy this week. <sighs> but I'll get through this week somehow. So, again, Andrade's, del Don Andrade's deliberate. He's not slow. He's not plotting, either. Very deliberate. Um, all he flew, uh, um, Andrade went to the outside. Uh, Ali was going to do a flippy thing. Selena Vega's like, you have to get over me. She ducked, and I'll tell you what. Even if she was still standing, Ali cleared the ropes. He cleared little tiny Selena Vega. Oh wow! Again, that was I, I like that when Selena Vega gets involved, and more so when it doesn't work because it's something different. Uh, and Andrade eventually does hit again, very deliberately placed hammerlock DDT on Ali. Ali still looks so good in this in this match. Wow. I haven't done this in a while and wrong. A second surf and turf match. And then the next match we have the Viking Raiders versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. And this was, again, this was a fun match. This match actually had a pretty good contrast in styles. Again, the Viking Raiders the bigger, stronger brutes, whereas Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode are much more technically based, uh, more savvy, I guess, especially being heels. So I'll tell you what, they did, they did those heel double teams. Perfect. I mean, they could have been doing those in the NWA in the 80s, and it would seem right in line with what they're doing. It's right in line with our characters. It's right in line with our wrestling skills. So that's really good. Um, the first part of the match, Dolph just gets squashed. Poor Dolph. He just bumps way too much. Uh, eventually, he does get the tag to Robert Roode. Of course, Robert Roode then takes over the match. And this is where he starts to see on those classic double team spots. And that's all he's like to say. And, and then Eric seems to be the one person in the Viking Raiders 
who's there to take the bumps. Eric is the <laughs> Carl Anderson of Viking Raiders. Whereas Ivar, fly, Ivar, fly. Whoa. And those cartwheels and stuff. Um, a lot of good false finishes. It made feel like this match was important. And this, remember, this match actually was for the um, Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, Robert Roode did hit the glorious DDT, but there wasn't a kick out per se. Ivar saves, made the save on Eric, so that's good. I like the fact that they're still protecting finishers. Hey, a guy had to come in, the partner had to come in the ring and break it up. That's good, smart tag team wrestling. I'm not going to let my partner get tagged if I can do something about it. Uh, uh, uh. I'm not just going to be there like Charlotte and be like, what are you doing? And like some other tag teams will do that too. Every so often. It's really rare to see that. Uh, eventually, Eric and I do hit their finisher on Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler. I think there are stories. I think it was 2012, 2013. He would bump so hard he'd give himself concussions. That's just ridiculous. It has happened to other wrestlers. Goldberg. But that's just really tough to watch. I mean, he just flings his body around like reckless abandon when he does bumps. Which is really good. Not going to give him a really long career, though. Uh, so, actually, the Viking Raiders win. They're the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Somewhat unexpected. You figure they would get the belts. You figure they would change probably a crown jewel. Yeah, you never know. This was another fun match, though. It made sense. It had a good story involved with it. The wrestling was good. A third surf and turf match. So that was really cool. This, I think the only thing that slowed this raw down was the fact that they just had draft stuff all the time. And then it was Alistair Black versus Eric Young. I saw these go out. I saw these two go out in NXT. 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 Uh, uh, oh, this is an NXT, though. Um, this actually was probably the lowest rated match, only because I saw these two wrestling in NXT. When Aleister Black made his debut, and Eric Young was still the leader of Sanity, a very quick story about that, Eric Young was taking on Aleister Black, and what happened was, there were a whole bunch of kids next to me, I think it was my first or second time, I went to NXT here in Daytona Beach, and what happened was, the kids were yelling, because they wanted to see Nikki Cross get involved. Nikki Cross is a... Freaking squirrel eating coffee grinds while drinking jolt soda. <laughs> Sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen. But she was running on the ring. The kids were chanting, Let the woman fight! Let the woman fight! Eric Young said, Shut up and sit down! Yes, sir! That was funny to see. He's such a good interpersonal wrestler. I just laughed. And those kids are. Terrified of Eric Young. However, NXT, this is not. However, though, Eric Young did get in more often than, his, than Aleister Black's other squash matches, which is good to see. Eric, And hey, you know what? Eric Young's on TV, too. Uh, this was a good showing of Aleister Black and Eric Young. Um, again, that, that like Dragon Sleeper reverse guillotine choke. Ooh. Maybe they don't like the the black mask looks too much like a kick from everyone else. But I'll tell you what. That finisher looks really good. Alistair Black, of course, won. I'll tell you what. This might be just a low point of the match. Of the whole night. Still a ham sandwich, though. And there's more draft stuff. I'm not going to go over all the draft stuff. Again, I don't like... I'm not a big fan of contract signings. You do that kind of on your own. No one wants to see my contract signing. It's the most boring thing that I hear. Sign this. Thank you. Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, then there was Ricochet versus Shelton Benjamin. A fun match in and of its own. Um, the king is... Mauro Ronaldo needs to take a cue from Jerry the King Lawler. 
he really only made one comic book reference. It was um, a ricochet was Spider-Man and Sheldon Benjamin as his Dr. Octopus because he would just grab him seemingly out of the air. Happens a lot with Ricochet, though. And, and just then, then begin to bend them or break them in some fashion. So that's good. I think he only mentioned it like a few times. And it was, Mamma Mia, this is Spider-Man v. Dr. Octopus. Or, uh, was it Shale? No. It wasn't a bot. I don't know. Whichever actor played, it wasn't. It was enough of a pop culture reference to say, okay. It didn't go way overboard, which is good, because I don't even think the king knows who Nightwing would be. Um, he just knows him as a comic book superhero. That's good. Uh, that was funny. Again, Sheldon's the king of strong style. Ricochet, again, Styles makes fights, and that's very important. Ricochet, again, the high flyer. Sheldon did everything to do to ground them. He just, he just beat up poor Ricochet. And I'm curious. Did these two ever wrestle in New Japan Pro Wrestling? Because I know Sheldon Benjamin was there for a stint. King Ricochet had his stint there. I don't know. Um, again, every time Ricochet tried to, tried to get distance, Sheldon Benjamin kind of, kind of closed the distance. Uh, Sheldon also did the kind of Ric Flair over the top rope thing. Woo! That's good to see. It's good to see a homage to other wrestlers. Especially one as notable as a Ric Flair. Uh, eventually, there's the recoil, which I, I guess is a new finisher, or it might be like the might be the TV finisher where he saves the six thirty, maybe for like big pay per views. Makes sense. Still looks pretty good. Uh, the recoil looks like just a single leg code breaker. A Whatever it is. This was a fun match. I mean, Ricochet can still fly. Sheldon Benjamin, still strong. He had his moments in this match, which is good. That There is some believability now that Sheldon Benjamin could win. Always good to see. A cheeseburger match. Again, hard to really screw up matches like this. Oh, then there was more stuff about Crown Jewel. I won't be able to cover that because that's on Halloween. Oh, Thursday. I know it's Saudi Arabia, but still. They're going to lose a huge chunk of their audience because it's a Thursday. It's a, it's during the work day. It's during school. It's And it's Halloween. And I'll get some more about my schedule for this week at least. A little bit later. Um, then we had Cedric, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy. Oh, 205 Live! 205. 205. 205. 205. You know, this was a really fun match. It was well paced. Buddy Murphy looked so strong. Buddy Murphy was never 205 pounds anyway. Cedric actually looks a little bit more comfortable in the ring. These two probably had. I don't think they've ever wrestled in NXT before. I don't think they did. They might have for a house show. But again, these two, it was fun. Again, another well-paced match. Again, if you're going to have a wrestle, at least use the arm bar to sling them off the, off the ropes. Makes sense. And, it's, and it, doesn't, it doesn't slog the match up. It doesn't clog it up. Uh, Murphy eventually hit Murphy's Law. Cedric kept on going for the lumbar check. However, Murphy's smart to that. And these two, they can fly. They can they can mat wrestle. I'll tell you what, these two are really fun to watch. It's a good quality match. I don't know what else to say. Watch it, because this was definitely a surf and turf match. And there are four surf and turf matches on Raw. Whoa. Let's go, Heyman. Let's go, Heyman. Holy dangerously. Uh, then there's more draft stuff. And eventually there was 
Oh, yeah, contract signing. Again, they're boring. You always know the table gets destroyed, and there's a big brawl that ensues. Uh, there are more draft stuff. That's pretty fun because Seamus was in full soccer hooligan mode. Seamus, Seamus. That was fun to see. Um, the final match of the evening, it was Natalia and Lacey Evans. I forget why they said these two were going to team up. I guess they just wanted to showcase themselves so they could work together, I guess. I guess they they they, they, they kissed and made up. Or hugged and make up. Ooh, kiss and make up. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I got Tranquilo. Uh, versus the Kabuki Warriors. I love the fact that the Kabuki Warriors, they're starting to paint their face. I mean, Kyrie Sane, I think she wore, like, I think she put her outfit on backwards. Or she forgot part of her outfit. She forgot the bra of her outfit. But she had the t-shirt on underneath like the front strap that goes from her collar to her bottoms. I don't know. I, I just noticed that. I'm like, that looks different. Normally, wrestlers wear the t-shirt over top. So, I I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool though. Um, Asuka's coming out with a face paint. She has the green stuff coming out of her eyes. In the green mess. I also, I mean, she looks really good, though. Asuka looks strong. Um, Asuka's really more heelish now, because the thing was to both Natalia and Lacey, she was really, like, mocking... Mocking kicks and knees that looked like the softest knees and kicks that she ever delivered. And it looked like she actually had to try to make it look, like, super soft. It would just be, eh, eh, eh. It's like when my cat bats at me to, to, to say clean my litter box. It's like, human, wake up. I'm not hungry, but wake up. Are you alive, my human? So it was pretty cool. And Asuka knows how to reverse that sharpshooter. Asuka's a good wrestler. Kyrie Sane's great. And those, those two, the Kabuki Warriors, have just gone full blown out heel. And they're having fun with it. Uh, I do like the fact there wasn't any green mist this match. I do like the fact that they're saving the green mist for special occasions. You're not going to be inundated with it. You're like, oh, is she going to do the green mist now? Oh, she didn't She didn't need the green mist. When will she need the green mist? Yeah, keep down the edge of your seat. It's really good. Alicia Evans actually looks good in the tag, te in the tag team role. Uh, it probably hides some of her deficiencies because she's not necessarily smooth. She has to pace herself a little bit more. And again, working with Natalia, who's a veteran forever. Asuka's who's wrestled forever. Carrie Sane's wrestled a long time. Lacey Evans, she was protected to some degree. Again, really kind of hit her, hit her deficiency. She, she, Lacey Evans looked good in this match. I think it's been a long time since anyone has ever said that about Lacey Evans, too. Uh, and Kyrie Sane, again, just the last cover kind of looks funny. Kyrie Sane's so tiny. Lacey Evans isn't that big of a woman, but compared to Kyrie Sane, she is. I mean, Kyrie S Asuka has a little width to her, at least. Asuka's fairly broad in the shoulders and those hips. And a little tummy of Asuka. <laughs> Asuka has a muffin top. Kyrie Sane does not have a muffin top, however. Kyrie Sane is freaking tiny and skinny. I think the only person I've seen skinnier than Kyrie Sane, I think, before a comeback was Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai. Ridiculously thin. I don't know how some of those women do it because it looks like they would just be broken in half. But um, Lacey Evans um, eventually beat up Natalia a lot. Again, Asuka knows how to reverse reverse the sharpshooter. He gets into an ankle lock. Uh, they mock, of course, like, come here, tagger. And then what? We'll, we'll, like, she'd hold her hand out and, like, pull it back. It's like, ha you can't tag her. Uh, Lacey screaming reach. Uh, Lacey Evans does get the hot tag eventually. Hits the wrecking ball drop kick, which is actually really good to see. He uses a moonsault. Kyrie Sane does that kind of weird mosquito double stomp that Albro Del Rio tried to do. They should just remove all reference to Albro Del Rio. Or Alberto Patron! Uh, what else? Kyrie didn't make the blind tag to Asuka. Lacey never saw that. 
So Lacey Evans is victim of a roll up. Sneaky heel win. I like it. And then for the send this I'll tell you what. Wow. Five time five five surf and surf matches this night. And then the main, and then in the main event segment, Seth Rollins shows up to the Firefly Funhouse. Poor rambling rabbit, he's terrified of everything. Seth, Seth beats up Bray Wyatt, and then burns it down. Bray has bad choices in houses, folks. Ron Yorn burnt down the shack. Who knows what happened to the, the house in the House of Horrors match? And Seth Rollins burns down the set. And the only reason you could tell it was a set is because the camera guy obviously tried his darnest to hide it was a set. But you could tell, like, in one part, you, like, you could see there was a square off and you could actually see the set. And um, I don't know if it was a set. I don't think it was backstage. This was probably, like, pre-filmed some studio where they had, like, fire extinguishers all over the place. I'm sure WWE can rent studio space. They have money. Money to that. But I'll tell you what, it was a fun episode of Firefly Funhouse. I guess it puts an end, possibly, to the Seth Rollins Fiend feud. That was a fun feud, though. And they still could have done so much. I mean, look at what Seth had to do to have to win. So they could have milked this really till WrestleMania. Give the Fiend the belt at WrestleMania? That would be good. Again, all I want is my shiny quarter and no more copyright violations. And that was raw. I'll yep, so, um, yeah, going to hit my half hour time limit. So, the rest of the week looks like I'll, um, I'm going to do my AEW review. I'll probably get to that also. Shoot, it's almost midnight. Yeah, I can do that. Look at eight hours of sleep, which is good. But so for my AEW review show, will probably be done Thursday as well. And also Thursday, I'm going to do my predictions for Impact On For Glory. I think that's the name of it. Uh, Friday is going to be a dual show. It's going to feature both SmackDown and Friday Night Impact. I think this is the last night of Friday Night Impact. I think they go to Tuesdays next week. Saturday, unfortunately, I can't make it to Daytona Beach. I have to work that night. Sunday, I'll do my re my kind of review of Impact. Again, I still have 40-some-odd days for my bad behavior. So... It'll be pretty cool though, once I get back live streaming. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see everyone later. Bye. Yeah, we will. Jeez, but don't, 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 don't burn it down.